Hey YouTube! Welcome to another video. In this episode, I'll show you how to configure dynamic DNS service in TP-Link Omada. I will not get too technical about this but IP addresses is used to uniquely identify a device. So I'll quickly show you this diagram so that we can have something to look at. Okay, so for example, I can have a file server somewhere around here where I save all my pictures at 192.168.90. let's say 200 or my printer where i print all my documents to say 192.168.0.100 if anyone wants to use that service or reach that service or if i want to use any of the file server or the printer i just use their ip addresses and go from there however once there are so many such as a movie streaming server for example netflix so they have their own ip addresses like youtube they have their own ip addresses and then countless other similar or competing services so remembering all these ip addresses by their ip becomes a chore if not outright impossible now we have dns and in some cases mdns which maps ip addresses to an easy to remember word Word or combination of words now typically wanted these IP addresses when they you map them to a DNS to never really change often because if they change then the name points to a wrong server making the device or service unreachable this type of IP addresses if they never change is what we usually call static IP addresses and, and they're really awesome for use for servers but for most home users we don't really care much about the static IP addresses both of our end devices usually have what we call DHCP they are dynamic but they are not really good for static services like a printer or a file server if they always change then you always have to constantly know or find out what's the new IP so that you can use of their service in the ISP world unless you specifically order the static IP internet service you were always given by the ISP a DHCP IP addresses so it is good for almost all use except for being a server because if the ip keeps changing having a dns server is smooth now comes dynamic dns this is to address that always changing ip so instead of explaining what the dns is i'll just read from the no ip server what it really means so let's go check their website out so what is dynamic dns so basically it is a system for allowing an internet domain name like something.com to be assigned to a dynamic one that changes and is not always the same IP address. Since the dynamic IP address changes, dynamic DNS makes it possible for other computers on the internet to establish connections to that machine without needing to know the actual IP address. In my videos, I usually show VPN servers, WireGuard servers, OpenVPN servers, IPsec servers, and I usually use my one IP to reach that particular server. So with dynamic DNS, I can instead call my server RC server, and I don't have to really remember what that IP address is because like I said, it keeps changing, and that means on my end device that has that IP address as the server, it will change and one day it will not become useful anymore because it has changed. But if I have a dynamic DNS name, if I have a dynamic DNS service that maps to a dynamic IP like this one, then whether the IP changes or not doesn't really matter. The name will remain the same so long as I keep my account active. So that's a lot to take in but before we continue I just want to make sure that you have all the prerequisites before you proceed with this video. So one of the prerequisites as you can see here I'm using a no IP service. This is a free service you don't have to buy anything you don't have to sign up for anything it's a free subscription but it's only limited for one. If you want more then you gotta pay. Okay so this is the very first one. In order for me to shorten the video and make sure that I don't spend too much time editing and blocking a lot of stuff i head on to the dynamic dns this screen that you can see i head on to the dynamic dns and then i click on the no ip hostname so that i don't have to show my one ip in here normally you will end up with the dashboard when you first log in and sign up for the service okay, okay so the second prerequisite that you need to have before you continue with this one is the one ip of your device so to get your one ip go to your device settings in Omada go to your settings and don't worry about it this is not my one IP this is still inside the lab so 
in real you can see it's 172 20 110 104 but this is not my real one ip i'm just letting you guys know that i'm just using this where how, how you can get your own one ip so make sure to take note of this okay you will need this one ip address and make sure to take note of your username and password for your login to no ip server you will also need that so those are the two prerequisites make sure you have an account and then the next one is to get your one ip from your Omada console so now that you have all those information we can go ahead with the configuration but before we dead on for configuration i want to ask for your help that if you find this episode helpful and useful please subscribe like and hit the notification bell to help the channel like i said this is one of the prerequisites make sure you have your account set up for this no ip server if you have a different dynamic dns server that's okay you can use any other dynamic dns server service provider but for this one i'm using a no ip and i logged in i head on to the dynamic dns and then i click no ip hostname i will need to create my hostname my very first one in here create a hostname let's say rc's abode can create that one you can see here this is a prefix though i will have rcsabode.ddns.net but you don't have to be a ddns.net domain you can choose from a lot of this one ifdp.org maybe and see and there is a, also a paid one if you actually prefer that i like cisco freak dns for me so yeah i think these are a lot of good domains but i usually just end up using the default one ddns.net and if you're using an ipv4 as you can see on my mother controller i'm using an ipv4 other so i'm using this option if you have an ipv6 version from your provider you have to select this one i will not explain these other two options you can read that on your own all the other options in here but for the purpose of this video you can either use the dns host in here for ipv4 and this one for your ipv6 ip addresses so now that you have that info remember that one ip address that i said you need to have as a requirement you need to enter your one ip in here so right now it's currently black but rest assured that this is my one ip address that i'm typing in here you will need your one ip address and enter it here and then click create hostname okay so now that it's created, what this one tells me is that I can reach my one IP through this name. However, this will only get me to my router interface unless I do some other configuration on my router. Okay, so let's just copy it and I'll show you how it looks once I put the domain name in here. Okay, so as you can see here, it sent me to the login interface of my Omada, okay, because there's no other service in here. I believe I have another service running in here, so let me just see. Okay. So in here, as you can see here, I can log in to my AdGuard server through the same DNS server but I have to use a port number I'm not going to show how to use the port forwarding in, in this particular video I'm just showing you that you can access your internal services and internal servers through the dynamic DNS service you can see here I was able to log in to my AdGuard server externally using this particular domain name that's the power of dynamic DNS if you have a, a VPN service WireGuard service a open vpn service ssl service ipsec service that you would like to access through a dns you can use dynamic dns and then map the proper port forwarding in them and then you're good to go so that's pretty much done from the point of view of no ip your configuration is done everything is being forwarded to your home devices but if you remember your ip address change from time to time so you need to make sure that when it changes that no ip is updated you can do it manually editing the ip address of your hostname but we can do it automatically as well no ip offers a dynamic client that runs on windows so but you need to have a pc running you don't have to worry about it much because all it has to do is just update once in a while so it runs and in, in windows environment so just install that or what you can do is 
make use of Omada's dynamic DNS service and we're going to, I'm going to show you how that is done. So go to settings. Okay, so if that is not clear here, so hold on. So let me just drag it here so you can see. So click settings. Okay. If you're not there, and then go to services. So let me just maximize the screen again. Okay, so go to dynamic DNS. Okay, then create new dynamic DNS entry. And then from here, you can select your provider, right? Mine is no IP, so I just select no IP. I have it uh, enabled in here. And I used one LAN 4 for my demonstration. And then I have a username, and you can register here as well from this website, from this console if you don't have anything. So let's say RC Maps. And this one is the wrong password. I'm going to use a wrong password just, you know, for demonstration purposes. And then for domain name, I'll just paste my domain name in here. And then update interval. You can do it every three days, every 12 hours, or never. And then you can get 12 hours and then create. And that's pretty much it. Okay. So now that you have set it up something like this, in the case that we rebooted your um, your modem or your just your ISP just sent you a new IP address, then you're good to go. It will update every 12 hours. That means your dynamic DNS will always be up to date. This one will always map to the correct IP address with your Omada updating it from time to time and you're now IP updating the system in the back end to map to, to the new IP address. Okay, so I guess that's pretty much it. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you don't like this video, please give it a dislike. But please do give me a reason why you don't like this video. The audio quality is bad, there's a lot of noise, you don't like the sound effect, whatever that might be, it helps a lot. So um, again, I hope to see you in the uh, next video and I hope this one is helpful for you. Thank you and bye bye.